Hey everybody, Aaron Count Stage Dynamics, and this is my review of the Huxworks Flow 556K suppressor. If you're not familiar, you probably are, but just for those few people who might not be familiar, Huxworks used to be called OSS suppressors, and they are, if not the originator, then definitely the innovator when it comes to flow through style. In fact, that's like their specific uh, motto the flow through type of suppressor operation. Instead of traditional baffle stack design, they use a flow through design, which is a helical system, which allows the gas inside the suppressor to behave in different ways, which provides a different level of performance from their suppressor. And while this particular style of suppressor operation in the past has been looked down on by some institutional brands, it's becoming the in demand style of suppressor functionality because it has alternate purposes besides just um, the pressure regulation suppressor, which is one of the initial impressions or one of the initial goals, I would say, with the uh, that particular style of operation of suppressor. I've always liked it because it helps the suppressors function on guns that might otherwise be finicky being suppressed, such as like scars and brands and and um, some of the short stroke or long stroke other piston systems out there, even the occasional DIAR, if it's just gassed wrong, is gonna function a lot better with this particular type of pressure, especially on a Huxworks, than it would necessarily with a traditional back pressure or even a low, or I'm sorry, a traditional high pressure or low pressure can. Um, the other added benefit is I'm venting way more of my gas out the front of the gun where it should be going. And the gas has to go somewhere. So it's either gonna vent it's either gonna come out the muzzle or it's gonna come out at the chamber at the shooter's eye, or it can't even go back further than that, depending on the operating system, and come out uh, near the cheek weld through the actual receiver. Uh, and that can be a little bit annoying. That's how we end up getting gases in our face. But the gas has to go somewhere. So it's it always made sense to me, at least, when a suppressor company says, hey, because this gas is going to occur, let's find a way to help manage it. Anyway. The Flow 556K is the newest suppressor offering from Huxworks. And of course, my initial question getting into it was, what is it doing differently than the other venerable suppressors like the, uh, the Helix QD system? Is it better or is it a rebranding? Is it just a different style? Am I looking at aesthetics? Am I looking at features? Is there anything remarkably different? So I set out in a 2000 round review to find out exactly what, if anything, was new with this particular style of suppressor. First things first, the Flow 556K is 3D printed, which is going to become, uh, just like, <laughs> uh, you know, three or four years ago, a lot of companies were looking down on the idea of, of, of gas venting or flow through technology, and they're now offering their own cans and pretending like they never talked that way. Uh, you're going to see 3D printing, and you're already starting to see it, but you're going to see 3D printing become a much more common uh, place manufacturing style for suppressors. In fact, I my theory, and, and I share this theory with a bunch of other people, uh, eventually you're going to see traditional suppressor manufacturing become much less common because 3D printing offers some some pretty significant advantages for the, for the most part. The Flow 556K is weighing in at just 11.8 ounces, and while it is optimized, of course, for uh, 5.56, 2.23, uh, it's also something you can use for 17 HMR, 22, or 5, anything in the 22 caliber, caliber family. Uh, you're looking at 17.4 stainless, which is a very durable class of, of metal that, that's used in a number of different firearms components, and it's nice to see that it still makes it into the firearms world as far as suppressors go. And this suppressor measures in at just over five point, uh, just over five inches. Well, actually, almost six, five point five. So depending on if you want to round up, you want to round down. And it has their 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 proprietary QD, which is more just like a really a direct thread system to mount the suppressor. Um, other than that, just at glance, you're looking at the suppressor and you're like, okay, I don't see too much different. The baffle system uh, is a is a slight departure from what I'm used to with the QDs. If you already have a helix, you can look inside and see that there's definitely a difference in the um, surface behavior, surface design of the baffle stack. 
And of course the flow through baffles work differently anyway. It's not a traditional stack of cones like you'd see with a lot of suppressors. It's not te technically a monocore system either. It's a helical system, which allows gas to behave differently, which I kind of already mentioned in the beginning of the video, but that definitely affects and effects the performance of the suppressor. Um, some people, and, and this was true in the past, with suppressors that were styled in this way or operated in this way or managed gas in this way anyway, they tended to be a little bit louder. Uh, what can we say about the Flow 556K? Well, getting into the, the review, the first 500 rounds just kind of the get to know you phase. One, I already love OSS, or I'm sorry, Huxworks mounting system. I've always been a big fan of just the simplicity of just screwing things on and screwing things off. And it's some um, reverse threaded or propane threaded if you want to Hank Hill it. Uh, so the gun itself doesn't loosen the suppressor and that's definitely one thing I've never experienced with any of their suppressors is shooting it and have the suppressor come loose because they've kind of counter thread or reverse thread or contra thread or whatever you want to call it. Um, so the arguably the spin of the bullet, the behavior of the gas wouldn't um, unthread the suppressor. And I found that to be pretty true on the guns that, that I've used it on. But in that first 500 rounds, one thing that really stood out was the tone. This is a short suppressor. It's got K in the name, which usually denotes a smaller version of a larger suppressor, which we're just talking specifically about this one cam, but they say flow 556K for Kurtz, 5.5 inches in length. I'm thinking this is going to be a can for that I'm probably gonna have to relegate to longer guns, 16 inches, 13 inches, maybe 12 would be a little spicy, any shorter than that. But in the review, I use it on uh, barrel lengths from 10.5 up till 18 inches for precision shooting. This thing's quiet. I'm not saying it, it, it's it's like the quietest suppressor I've ever heard, because that's definitely not the case, but it might be the quietest suppressor I've ever heard that was five inches, well, five and a half inches. Uh, I, I personally own suppressors that are six inches, six and a half inches, even seven inches that are louder than this suppressor. So there's a new magic in the way that they are, they're approaching the, the internal suppressor design that's obviously changing the tone at the shooter's ear. Uh, some people are like, okay, well, what does it sound like to the observer? I don't personally care, because the suppressor is for me. It's for my ear protection. But this is something that's very comfortable to shoot, even in, even in closed spaces. I mean, it's still, it's still going to have that safety concern. It's not something you're gonna wanna shoot without ear pro on for an extended period of time. But if you had to shoot five or six rounds in an enclosed space, no big deal. Uh, if you wanted to use it for precision shooting, so it's a lower sustained rate of fire, you probably, yeah, I, I wouldn't personally don't take my advice for this, you probably wouldn't have to wear ear pro. Uh, ear pro is still always a good idea when it comes to shooting, especially sustained shooting, but just a couple of rounds. And that's kind of the idea behind suppressors anyway, behind signature reduction. Um, and functionality of the gun and, and, and reduce toxicity to get the gases down range and set it into the shooter's face. For 500 rounds, I'm seeing really good performance out of this can. Of course, that brings us to our burn down, which usually takes place the second 500 round block of fire. I just do 500 rounds as quickly as possible to see if that accelerated rate of fire will identify any issues with the suppressor that I wouldn't notice with the same round count over a much longer period of time. So three to four minutes versus uh, three to four hours, days, you know how it goes. Here's your burn down. That's hot. First to last round, no issues. And of course they say that the Flow 556K is full auto rated. And uh, I tend to agree with that. Although the definition of full auto rating uh, is either the manufacturer, mil spec, or 
somewhere in between. Uh, for my purposes, I found it to perform really well on Select Fire Full Auto. Uh, so I would definitely agree with that assessment. Performance was good. First to last round, I didn't notice any significant change in tone. Uh, that's something we're looking for too. As a suppressor gets hotter, does it sound different? And that's not something I experienced with the Flow 556K. For the next thousand rounds, I just used the suppressor in my normal practice on a bunch of different, uh, d bunch of different lengths of barrels. Well, not a bunch, a few. I think a bunch may be uh, over-exaggerating how many rifles I actually used. Uh, but on like a Sons of Liberty Gunworks 11.5, and then I also put it on my FN DMR3 for precision purposes, it's got a really good tone on the longer guns. Don't get me wrong, it's still quiet on the 11.5, quiet for its size. But on that long gun, it's, it's a very comfortable pulse, very comfortable recoil pulse. It's also a very comfortable tone. Like I said, if I was going to be shooting precision-y, so not, you know, not bang, 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 but more like one round every couple of seconds, or maybe even, you know, longer between rounds than that, depending on what distance and, and what I'm trying to do, I'd be perfectly happy throwing the suppressor on there and just, that'd be it. No ear pro, not even going to worry about it. Because uh, I'm just not shooting to the same frequency that's going to start to cause attenuation issues at the ear and potentially lead to some kind of hearing damage, which is something we definitely want to worry about. And me already having hearing damage, I'm very paranoid about additional hearing damage. Great tone. Can just sounds good. Uh, and I'm generally not big on, and you guys, you know, if you watch my suppressor reviews in the past, I've never really been big on speaking at length on the tone. I've usually said it's got a good tone and we just move on because suppressors just sound like suppressors. Uh, there are differences, of course, but I'm, it's like, you know, getting into the conversation about muzzle devices that have a, the ping. I'm like, who cares? Uh, you, you just fired a bullet and it made a really loud noise, much louder than the ping noise. So who cares if the muzzle device made a pinging sound? Nobody cares. Some people do. I don't. So when it came to suppressors, I'm like, hey, it's suppressed. It suppresses. Well, does it sound better than this can? I'm like, dude, it sounds like a suppressor. I will say, with the Flow 556K, I do finally notice a subtle difference in tone versus what I'm traditionally used for, even over other OSS, or I'm sorry, other Huxworks cans like the, uh, the Helix QD. There's a difference there. And I appreciate the difference. So yeah, I'm still not big on tone, like usually like suppressed is suppressed and like tone can matter depending on how specific you wanna be. But I definitely noticed that this has a, I don't even know necessarily how to describe it. It's very esoteric in that regard. Um, a more rolling noise. It's not quite as a sharp pressure. It's more of a, a curvature that we got going on with our sound behavior there. And I think that's something that somebody with a, a much more specialized equipment measuring the sound of the suppressor can probably attest to. But at the shooter's ear, me being the shooter, really pleasant tone, surprisingly quiet for the size. Of course, signature. Uh, some people talk a lot about this, especially in regards to Huxworks cans or flow through style cans. Signature, signature, signature. If I shoot this thing and reduce lighting, is it gonna be a big deal? Well, muzzle flash is gonna be a thing. As a suppressor builds up volume, especially if you do one, two, three, four, five versus one, two, three, four, five, as that gas builds up, you usually get a three or every three or four rounds, you'll get a pop. And don't quote me on the three or four rounds. It could be every two or three, could be every seven or eight. But as you build up a frequency of gas inside the suppressor, you're going to get some kind of muzzle flash, unburnt powder, gas is igniting, and you're gonna get a more significant muzzle flash than you do from the rounds preceding it or the rounds that follow it, and then the whole cycle begins over again. Muzzle signature on this suppressor, even on shorter guns, pretty awesome. Uh, you're going to have the occasional poof of flash, but it's got a built-in flash hider, and it's in the name, hides the flash. So as far as total signature, you're still gonna have muzzle signature, but this, the muzzle signature on this, on long guns, it's almost non-existent because they're burnt optimizing, they're burning most of the powder anyway. On short guns, we're getting really good performance. So uh, at least for my particular um, uh, pedantism, uh, muzzle flash is reduced. It performs well in low light. It's not something I notice in my vision, either shooting, like I said, low light which I'm using a weapon light in most of the situations anyway, unless it's like a dust situation, or under night vision, which you know usually muzzle flash is exaggerated in all firearms under night vision because they magnify available light. Uh, Flow 556K performs excellent. It's got excellent signature reduction for low light, no light purposes. 
So what's my final verdict on the Flow 556K? A lot of people have been talking about, oh, it won the FBI contract. I gotta be honest with you guys, I don't care what the FBI uses, because to me, they're not on top of the hill of firearms expertise. They have generally been a been looked to for their firearms expertise because of the FBI's, um, their their ballistic research lab and, and their, their testing protocols, everything like that. I'm absolutely convinced right now that there's a handful of YouTubers that do more thorough, more interesting, and more updated and a little bit more factual testing than I'm gonna get from the Federal Bureau of Investigation. So I, and and congratulations to Huxworks, of course, for winning the suppressor contract with the FBI. I personally don't care what the FBI uses. They are not an organization I look to for firearms prowess. Uh, because most FBI guys aren't shooters, and then as an organization, they're not a shooting organization. Now, there are exceptions to that. I know personal guys that work for the FBI that are amazing shooters, and of course the venerable, well, I don't know if venerable is the right word, the well-deserved reputation of such as, like, HRT. Besides that, they're pretty much just lawyers with guns, and that may hurt some feelings, but I don't care. They're not somebody I'm going to look to. I'm looking at the suppressor on its merits, not what contracts it has won. Uh, it's great that they adopted it. That's cool. Other people will too. I like this suppressor because it's awesome. I like this suppressor because uh, the size profile doesn't match the sound attenuation, the signature reduction that I get from it. Um, it's a little bit of black magic sprinkled on a, a suppressor that's going to be hard use doesn't weigh much at all and is easily attached to some of my favorite muzzle devices out there and it's more of a direct thread style but not quite to the same degree of annoyance that direct thread can be uh, and it's a system that stays locked up system that stays secure and it provides a great deal of accuracy um, return to zero is excellent on the suppressor even though it's not something that most people are going to put a lot of thought into because it's not marketed for precision shooting um, i found the return to zero on this thing to be uh, well within acceptable limits for a, for a precision rifle. I'm gonna shoot you know, my five round group suppressed, I'll take my suppressor off. Uh, I'm gonna have a zero shift, of course, that's gonna happen on almost any suppressor. The zero shift on, on this particular suppressor was pretty subtle. And then I throw the can back on and I get a return to zero, which is exactly what I'm looking for. Uh, if you don't currently have um, this style of suppressor, if you've been curious about the next generation 3D printed uh, flow through um, baffle design, uh, if you want to get away from the traditional, sometimes more finicky, high pressure, low pressure, traditional monocore or baffle stack design, this is an excellent suppressor to kind of get your feet wet and move into it. Um, I would highly recommend the suppressor to anyone who's looking for, hey, I just want one 556 suppressor, um, kind of want to stay away from this brand or that brand, or I want something as short as possible that's still going to get, the guys that want to have their cake and eat it too, this is about as close as you're going to get. You're, if you want a lightweight can that's not very long, that also provides really good sound reduction, this is kind of one of the one of the few cans in that category that's going to allow you to get all those things that usually don't uh, overlap in the Venn diagram of features that we're looking for. So um, this suppressor is definitely among rare company for the size, the weight, the material profile, which also supply, provides that degree of sound reduction, and I would highly recommend it. Um, is it going to be the greatest can? Of course, people could ask me in the comments, compared to this, compared to that. I don't do comparisons. I'm talking about this can on its merits and compared in generalities to other types of suppressor designs, but nothing specific from brand to brand to brand. So I'm not the guy to ask for that. Other people do videos like that. I don't. Um, I like to just talk about each individual product and let it stand on its own merits so I don't have to get too deep into the subjectivity of comparing things to things. So I'll say this. If you don't already have a 5.56 can, this would be an excellent choice. If you do have a 5.56 can and you're looking for something shorter or you're looking to get into, like I said, uh, a, getting away from the traditional baffle stack design to see if there's increased performance and increased sound reduction, get the Flow 5.56K. I think that Huxworks has done an excellent job cementing the fact that this is a technology that's here to stay and eventually will become the predominant way that baffle stacks are designed for suppressors in the future. I'm Eric Count with Sage Dynamics. Suppress accordingly.